Okay, hello everyone. Candace is speaking here. And welcome to the Supermap Mini Classroom Webinar Volume 3. So today, uh, I will present about the supermarket capability in handling the 3D data, especially for real-life smart city. But before that, I would like to give you a short introduction about the supermarket uh, company profile. So Supermap was found in Beijing in the 1997 by Dr. Erzun Fong. And for approximately 23 years, we have helped humans in solving various problems with GIS as the main foundation. We have about 4,000 employees spreading in all around the world, more than 1,000 partner, 1, partner coming from the more than 30 countries. And we also have 38 uh, branch offices and also the subsidiaries. There are five of our main key technologies that are uh, the basis for solving special problems that encountered using Supermap platform. Let's start with the first one is the Big Data GIS. So we support to do the whole process of Big Data, including streaming data, storage, management, Spatial analysis and also the data visualization. And the second one is AI GIS integration, or stand for the artificial intelligence and GIS integration. In the supermarket itself, the AI technology mainly provides three functions QAI, AI for GIS, and also GIS for AI. And the third one, Third one is the 3D GIS. A uh, supermap developed its function with the 3D modeling from 2009 by integrating some technology such as the data model, thin construction, spatial analysis, and also the software form. The fourth one is the cross-platform GIS. Not only in Windows, supermap also able to be open in other operating system uh, such as Linux. And for the last one is the cloud, the cloud computing. Since 2013, Supermap available to do the GIS processing using cloud technology that allow you to do the computing services, including servers, storage, databases, networking, and also software. And today webinar, I would like to give you an explanation of details about how Supermap Ideas Stop empowered the smart city with GIS, uh, 3D GIS capability. Okay, let's start with the uh, definition of the smart city. So maybe some of you are already familiar with smart city. In a smart city development, a city is expected to be able to provide information that is not only available, but also easily accessible and has an element of intelligence. And furthermore, smart city can provide a more detailed, good quality education, increase job opportunities, and also clean environment, and so on. So, and how is the GIS taking role uh, in the realization of the smart city? So GIS is an abbreviation of the geographic information system. This can be found everywhere. Maybe for those whose uh, geodesy and geometrics background are uh, already familiar with this. But basically, GIS is a tool, tools that can integrate various kinds of spatial data for further analysis until obtained results that can be used as a basis for decision making. The first, we can find GIS in the application traffic. By utilizing vehicle location information, for example, public transportation such as buses or uh, maybe trains, uh, we can create a location service system with various 
features, for example, to inform the customers about the bus schedule or notifications is uh, in case there are delays on the road and etc. And the second one is the emergency application. This will be very useful for dealing with the natural or non-natural disasters by providing a heat map visualizations, which is the result of overlaying a variety of other spatial data. We can find out which areas are the most vulnerable areas of the disaster marked in the red or the safest one marked with the green. Okay, the next one is the social governance. For the government, urban planning is not a simple thing, right? It requires various kind of uh, knowledge that are collaborated with each other. And with the presence of the GIS, we can utilize the spatial data from various sources, analyzed in 2D and also in 3D, until finally getting conclusions that can be applied in urban planning as well. Another uh, application, such as in urban management application, water application, and also business application. And this application, of course, will uh, increase the performance of your realization of smart city. And how about the 3D GIS? Okay, I will start with how 3D GIS, one of the example of 3D GIS taking part in a smart city realization. That is the 3D legality. So 3D is not only intended to be beautify or support visualization, but it comes to analyze and identification. And usually in an area, there is a vertical and also horizontal legality legality for example if we are going to make a certain infrastructure such as airports or flyovers and etc uh, then there is an area of a danger vertically and also the horizontally by modeling in the 3d it will be easier to find the right planning and implementation in accordance with the regulations as well another example is an urban area also has legality in the vertical, right? So if you have models using 3D survey and visualization, it will be detected which building who violate the rules and etc. And another legal aspect is the legal distance that uh, will detect the building from the road, just like this video. The red one is the building that, that violate the rules. And also this one. So for three dimension, there are three parts that have been developed now in the SuperMap software. There is about the data model, then uh, the multi-source data, and in terms of the IT technology. SuperMap support to integrate 2D and also 3D data, including 3D symbolization, and also apply the analysis function. And please be informed that SuperMap are built to handle various types of 3D data, such as public photography, PIM, or the building information modeling data, point cloud, 3D field, 3D terrain data, manual modeling, and also the 3D pipeline. And the visualization available to serve in various terminal, 3D zero client, PR or AR, and also 3D printing as well. In this video, a real case of SuperMap software implementation shown the integrating more than one type of 3D data, including 3D terrain and also the building information modeling. From this, we can imagine clearly what is the result of the realization of BIM data in the region. The experience of analyzing in the 3D will increase our accuracy in making the future decision.
another question. That's all the 3D used for object that we can clearly see, right? Or can be seen with the eye. Then we try to develop a game, how to express the 3D continuous space or what we usually only see from the data, from the data, from CSV file, uh, which contains coordinates and related data such as temperature, wind direction, level of contamination of an object, and etc. How to express that? And voxel grid will be the answer. So the voxel grid is used for continuous space or 3D space. It consists of volume elements, the regular hexagonal cubes that arrange regularly in the 3D space. This is a simple structure. Okay, let's take a look one of the example uh, the voxel grid realization. Yeah, in this case, we are trying to express the final value based on the voxel grid. The data should be spreading in the whole area. But then we extract the problems, I'm sorry, we extract the properties and do a covering model surface visualization. And last, we can get the expression for each building eventually. Moreover, Supermap's ability to do the 3D analysis is unquestionable. In this slide, I show you some of our spatial analysis feature. For example, visibility analysis, intervisibility analysis, shadow analysis, and then skyline, profile, terrain, contour map, and also the terrain aspect map. Okay, after this, I will show you the live demonstration in how to achieve this 3D spatial analysis using supermapirestop.net. And this is our 3D goal. So I will show you first one, uh, I will generate a 3D model from 2D data and then create a voxel grid from the 3D points, analyze 3D data spatially, and also achieve a beautiful effect for the 3D data. Okay, yeah, this is the visualization of the Superman idstop.net version. If you are, uh, don't have the software yet, you can download in our official website in the www.supermap.com. Here, I will show you, uh, first one, we will try to generate a 3D model from the 2D data and add some texture to make it more beautiful. First, we need to right click in the data sources. So data source is Supermap uh, Spatial Database. You can right click on it. And select the open file data source because I will not create the new one and I already prepared the existing one. Okay, I will open my data source. And inside the data source, already stored some of the uh, data that are. Uh, 3D points and also 2D data, 2D polygon data. First, I will create the 3D model using rapid method first. Okay, I just need to right click in the field PM, PM data, right click and select add the new map. Yeah, this is the 2D visualization of the building that we are going to create the 3D model from it. We will achieve a 3D model from this data based on the height information. So let's take a look at the attribute information in the field 2D data. Yeah, as you can see here, there is a height field, right? So the height field is for the information of the height for each building. And after this, we will create a 3D model based on this height information. We can close this and also close this map. 
uh, we don't need to save this map. Uh, before that, we need to open our data in the 3D scene. We can right click on it and add the new spherical scene. A new sphere will appear here. And now uh, double click on the layer, your building layer in the layer manager. Double click on right click and select the zoom to layer. So we will go directly to the uh, building data. It still have no height right field in the three dimension. So now we will change the style. Go to the style step here. And then in the audit mode, please change into absolute. And in the extent altitude, you can change into height. We'll, uh, we will refer the altitude refer to the height field. Okay, yeah, now we already achieve, we already obtained the 3D model from our 3D data. Every building has its own height, so it will have a different height each other. Right? So in case you are willing to create a 3D model with no, uh, just a 3D model, then you didn't need to get a details information or detailed texture, you can take advantage of this feature. Okay, next. Uh, I will add some texture to, uh, to make this 3D model more beautiful. So you can go to the texture setting here. And in the texture setting, you can uh i will try to change the side texture first so in the texture file we can select the file so i already had some of a uh, texture picture so you can use the picture file as well to change the texture in each building here. So as long as the picture is in this kind of format, Supermap able to support to import that picture as the reference. Okay, I will try to use this one. And click OK. Now the side texture already changed as well. And we can change the tiling view and tiling view value. change with a number that uh, the different number will give you a different visualization just like this and for the top texture we can change it now we have more beautiful visualization of our 3d rapid model Okay, after this, uh, I will show you a demonstration how to create the voxel grid. So the voxel grid is obtained from the 3D point data, 3D point. So the point need to have the information not only X and Y coordinates, but also Z coordinates. So I have the points here, uh, the data namely point. We can right click on it and add new, add to current scene. Yeah, 
So this is the the three D point. Okay, after this, I will show you uh, the the point information. So we can right click in the points data set here, and then you can select the browse attribute table. And here, you can see if the point is had a value, namely create RSVP. Create RSVP. And after this, we will go to uh, Foxo Grid. We will generate the Foxo Grid based on this value. So this value will be act as the eigen value. We can close the attribute tables. In the 3D data, here in the 3D data, we can create a 3D grid here, the 3D grid. To generate a 3D grid, there are some of options, method option for you to do the 3D interpolation, including IDW or distance inverse weighted, ordinary clocking, 3D Dalany, and also build cluster. I will use the IDW in stage instead, and then in the source data set, we will use our data source source data source and the source data set we will use the point data set and in the agent values please use the grid rsvp because this this uh field this field is act as the unit value for each point and i will not change the result data information but in the cut point height setting i will change it based on the maximum and minimum height of the point. Okay, let's go back to our attribute table of the point. As you can see here, the minimum value of the height is zero and the maximum one is the 40, right? So we will set the, this height parameters when we create the 3D voxel grid. So we can go back to generate the 3D grid point create our SVP. We will start with zero and the size is should be five. And for the split distance, I will change it into 10. So now the minimum and the maximum, the minimum and the maximum uh, section height is 40. And also zero. And these parameters will affect to the accuracy of your 3D interpolation. Okay, now we can click OK. After the generate 3D process is successful, you will get the new uh, 3D data in your data source. This one, the data set volume one. So we can track this data directly to our screen or you also able to right click on it and add the current pin so this is the result of our voxel grid okay i will turn off the point layer and also the building layer to give you more uh, better visualization of this voxel grid. Okay, let's take a look at the properties of this voxel grid. You can right click in the data set volume one layer and then uh, go to the layer properties. In the layer properties in the right side, in the voxel grid, Uh, we can change the basic information of the voxel, the voxel size, the scale, and then the transparency value. And also we can change the color table. In case you are not uh, prepared this color, you can use another color as well. 
Okay, I will use this one instead. This is my result. The more orange the color, it means that uh, it has the highest value rather than the blue one. Okay, now I will show you the slice uh, feature in for this voxel grid. We can check in the display slice profile. Okay, I will show you from the X1. So it will slice the, the focal grid in the XY, X way. And now Y. So as you can see here, the color is changed. And the last one is for the Z one. Yeah, you will get more, uh, you will have more experience, better experience in understanding your data using this box of data. Especially if you overlay it with the uh, uh, building data. So in case if you have a uh, contamination rate information or maybe final rate uh, data in the form of point, you can generate it uh, the 3D grid from it, and then do the slicing feature. So you will have more a better experience in understanding the data as well. Okay, now uh, that's all for the focal grid. And now we will move to analyze the digital elevation model data, the elevation data. Okay, we just close this tab and we will not save the, the workspace. Okay, after this, I will show you uh, the analysis for the elevation data. And I already have my workspace. So I will open my existing workspace and I already prepare it. Right click in the untitled workspace and open file workspace. So this is my 3D scene. I will open it. So in my 3D scene workspace, I have the sum of data source, word data source. CDD, Digital Elevation Model, or DEM, and also the uh, Building Information Modeling data. Okay, let's take a look for the PIM first. I just want to give you a show of about how Supermap able to uh, handle this PIM data. You can select all of them, right-click, and add a new spherical team. Double click on it and it will zoom to the layer. This is the example of PIM data. In Supermap software, we can integrate some of the 3D data, PIM with elevation data, PIM with the terrain data, and also others. Um, but I will not show you how we handle that in using this data because I will show you how Supermap uh, analyze the 3D data using another data that's more complete rather than this data. Okay, we just close this. And now I will open my CBD data. So in the my CBD data, uh, I have some of my models, and then I will I already store it in the CBD data source. 
and I will import all of them in the super map pin. We can select all of the data and right click on it and add the new spherical pin. And then after the data appear in the layer manager, you can double click on it or right click in one of the data and zoom to layer. Okay, yeah, as you can see here, this is a 3D data for just a sample data for um, just a small area in a 3D data. Okay, this is for the CP. And how about for the allocation data? We will close it first and open one of our my allocation data. Um, it's already stored in under the DEM data. Right click on it and add the new spherical scene. And we will add the uh, model as a terrain and also as an image. Click OK. After the data appear in the layer manager, we can double click on it. And yeah, this is the 3D uh, elevation data. Okay, now I will show you some of our special uh, 3D special capabilities uh, to analyze this 3D data. Start with the slope and aspect analysis. We can go to the 3D analysis, and uh, in here you will find some of 3D analysis in Supermap. We can start with slope and aspect analysis. We can draw a polygon. So normally, slope can be expressed either in the degree or a percentage. And here, it characterized with the difference of color. The red color is indicates the steepest slope and the blue for the plain one. A well aspect is the orientation of the slope and shown by the arrows, like this one. Can you see the arrow here? Yeah, okay, the next one I will show you. I will show you the other spatial analysis, the ice line analysis. So in the ice line, uh, ice line is the mostly commonly used method to represent a surface on a map. And an ice line is a smooth curve 
formed by connecting adjacent points with the same values. And it's commonly used, uh, the commonly used ice line, it includes contours, depth contours, isotherms, isobars, and isoheat lines. Okay, let's start. And please right click after you finish uh, create the polygon area. Here we get the ice line one. One line indicates is the area it has at the same height. Okay, I will delete it. Another one is the plotting analysis. Draw the polygon first and right click when you finish. So, this function is used to simulate the plotting process over a duration of time with a specified speed within the maximum or minimum elevation. And it is applicable for the terrain and also DEM data. And you're also able to change the texture color, the transparency, and then the place setting, the total time, and also others. Okay. Uh, next one, I will show you the profile analysis. You can delete it. Profile analysis. Just need to draw a line. In the profile analysis, we can generate a profile and show the change in elevation of a surface or show the outline of infrastructure models, building models, pipeline, and etc. Okay, now we will try to uh, do this 3D spatial analysis to another data. I will use my CBD data. This is the CBD data. Sorry, I forgot to add the water. First, I will change the water visualization. We can right click in the waters and then go to the light layer style settings. In the 3D field, we can uh, change the visualization for our water using the existing uh, symbol. Okay, I will use the Home lake instead. And then click OK. You can zoom to the layer again. Now, what is the holding? Yeah, as you can see here, the water visualization is changed based on our, uh, based on the symbol, the water symbol. Okay, now I will show you some of our capability in analysis 3D data. Start with the feasibility analysis. Okay, I will try to draw it here. Sorry, I'm in the view chat one. So in the 
a future analysis is process of finding the extent of visible areas to kill to a given point. And future analysis is useful when selecting a site for a transmitting tower, determining the scope of the radar scanning and building forest fire uh, lookout towers. Fuse analysis is a widely applied in the field, such as navigation, aviation, and also the military. So the red zone is means that we cannot see that area from this point, and the green one is means that we can see that area. Okay, let's take a look to see another uh, method. Okay, let's using the dynamic fuse instead and draw the line. As you can see, here there is a people here, and he will walk uh, from the start point to the end point, and we will have the visualization uh, how he can see the surrounding area. The red area means that he cannot see that area, and the green means that he can see that area. Okay, let's play it. Okay, next one, I will show you about the uh, feasibility analysis. Okay, I will use... Um, this building. And then click the feasible analysis. And draw the viewpoint. Yeah. So in the feasibility analysis, uh, this function is used to determine whether the certain location in a 3D scene are visible to the observer location. In feasibility analysis, uh, there are observer points and points to be observed, right? observer point here the observer point and here is the point to be observed and there can be more than one point uh, to be observed the results of the analysis are lines of visibility the visible part is in green and the red part is in red okay next we will try to use the shadow analysis we will select of the uh, result and delete all of them and we will try the shadow analysis now we need to draw a polygon to process the sunshine analysis Yeah, this is the result of the sunshine uh, red. So this analysis is used to calculate the duration of sunlight in a period of time within an extent defined by longitude and latitude. The analysis result is a collection of sampling points having a values showing the ratio of sunlight duration to the specified time span. The red, the red points means that it has the uh, greater value of the sunshine rate rather than the green one we can check it it as you can see here uh the the red point is has the daylighting rate 92 percent right and for the green one it has uh the daylighting right the daylighting rate around the 54 percent Okay, now I will show you about the skyline analysis. We can delete it. Skyline analysis. I'm sorry. We need to search a good area to create the skyline.
you just need to click the skyline. I will change the color. So yeah. The as you can see here, you can see the red color here. Maybe it's not really clear, the red color here. Okay, I will try to use another data to give more uh give a better result. Yeah, here. This one, the red color here, uh, uh, allow you to generate the boundary between the building top and the sky from the observer point. So our location is here now. And this this line will uh, give you a visualization, the boundary between the sky and the building. Okay, now I will show you how we can uh, give a 3D beautiful effect to our 3D data. Okay, we just need to delete the skyline one. To get the 3D beauty effect, we need to create a, a CAD file, CAD file. So I will create the new one by right click in my data source and then uh, select the new data set. I will uh, change its type into CAD and change its name into effect. Click create and after you get the cat file, after you get the cat file, now we will add this cat file to our uh, 3D model, to our scene. You can right click and add the Add to current scene. In the effect here, now uh, we will achieve some of beautiful effects for our 3D data. We can double click in the pen here. I'm sorry. We can double click. Uh, the pen here until the color is changed into blue and then uh, in the draw tab in the draw tab there are some of particle object uh, option fire explosion rain no fountain smoke fire and smoke tail flame and also the fireworks so Let's try with the first one is the fountain. To create a fountain in our fine 3D fine model, you only need to draw the location. And then the fountain will be obtained as well as this. Well, so I will just change the tilt angle and then the height and also each other uh, of the each fountain. And now we will try to achieve another uh, effect. Maybe. Um, Fire and smoke to simulate uh, of explosion. Yeah, on this one. And then maybe we can uh, create uh, fireworks. And then maybe rain.
with and I think it's still loading. And we also can change it into snow or maybe add a tail flame and also others. Okay, so that's all of the, uh, my presentation for today. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. And should you have any question, you can drop your question in the Q&A box and we will try to answer your question. And this video should be shared in our official YouTube account in the Supermap GIS in our YouTube. So feel free to visit our YouTube account and you can uh, watch this video again. Okay. So for today, we already retrieve, uh, generate a 3D model from 3D data, and then we have create a focal grid from 3D points, analyze 3D data spatially, and also achieve a beautiful effect for the 3D data. And should you uh, want to try all of the tutorial by your own. You can download the material in the link attached in this presentation. And also you uh, please feel free to submit your result because the participant who send their submission uh, can get the certificate from us. Please go to the link and you can get the details of the submission. And for the due date is please send me for the 8th of August in the 2020. If you have any other question and you are not uh, have time to drop your question in the Q&A chat box, you can ask us uh, by drop an email to my email at the Candice at supermap.com or to the supermap global at supermap official email in the global at supermap.com. Or also for further information about our product, you can visit our official website in the supermap.com. Okay, that's all for my presentation today and thank you.